Hi, I'm Beth from My Tutoring Bee, and today we are going to be talking about trigonometric ratios. So let's get started. So what are trigonometric ratios? Well, they're a way to help us determine, they have a lot of functions, but one of their functions is to help us determine the lengths of sides of triangles. So for example, if we have a triangle, a right triangle that looks something like this, and we know that this side is, uh, that this angle is 90 degrees. And let's say that we also know that this angle is 30 degrees. And let's say that we know that the length of this side is six units. Then we can go ahead and find these other lengths of the triangle just based on the ratio between that length six and the measurement of the angle, 30 degree angle. So let's show how that works with some examples. And what I'm gonna do is I'm, gonna, I'm going to erase my measurements here, and I'm going to copy this triangle and make another triangle that has the same measurements for its angles, but I'm going to scale it up and make it a little bit larger triangle. Let's also go ahead and label these triangles. This smaller triangle will be A, B, C. And this larger triangle will be X, Y, and Z. Okay, so triangle ABC is similar to triangle XYZ, and we know that because it has the same angle. So whatever this angle is, is the same as this angle, and whatever this angle is, is the same as this angle. Okay, so let's talk about the ratios of that triangle. And for right now, we're going to focus on angles B and Y. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the Greek letter theta here. So this is going, we're calling this angle measurement theta. And theta is just like any variable. It is just there to stand for a number that we don't know yet. We don't know what the measurement of this angle is, but we are going to use this ratio, this proportional relationship between these two triangles to show how each of these uh, lengths of the triangles are related to one another. So let's talk about some other vocabulary terms that we need to address here, and that is hypotenuse, adjacent, and opposite. We already know that hypotenuse is the length of the triangle, the side of the triangle that is opposite of the 90 degree angle, right? So here's our 90 degree angle, so across from that, or the longest length of this triangle is always going to be the hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and label that, which is gonna HYP, we're gonna abbreviate it. Okay, and now in relationship to the angle theta, again, we're talking about this angle here, angle B or angle Y, if we are looking at the adjacent leg of the triangle or the adjacent side of the triangle, then we are looking at that other length of the triangle that creates that angle theta. So we already have the hypotenuse here, and the other side of that triangle that creates that angle of theta is this angle here. For this triangle, it's uh, ZY, and for this triangle, it's CB. So we're calling this the adjacent side. Great, and so then the last one that we, the last side that we have to talk about is this side over here, and it is going to be the side that is opposite to angle theta. So let me go ahead and highlight that. And again, this side is the opposite side. And here's where that comes into play. So let's talk about how these triangles are proportional to one another. Let's talk about their ratios. And then we're going to get into those special names for the trigonometric ratios that, uh, that go along with this. So let's look at the length AC and how it's proportional to the hypotenuse, or in other words, length AB. Now, when we look at its proportions with triangle XYZ, we can see that XZ would need to be over XY. That would be the proportional relationship between these two triangles. AC is the opposite length over AB, which is the hypotenuse, and then XZ, which again is the opposite length over 
xy, which the, is the hypotenuse, right? And we can keep going with this and relate all three different sides to each other. So let's look, let's look at the adjacent sides. Let's look at CB. So CB we're going to set over the hypotenuse, so again AB. And that is proportional to the adjacent side of this larger triangle, so ZY, over, again, the hypotenuse, which is XY. Okay, all right, and now let's, we've, we've related the opposite and adjacent sides to the hypotenuse in both of these examples. So now let's relate the opposite and adjacent sides together. So if we take the opposite sides of AC and set that over CB, then that is proportional to the opposite of the larger triangle, which is XZ, over ZY. So now we have special names for these, and this is where our trigonometric ratios come in. So for this first ratio of opposite over hypotenuse, let me write that out, opposite, over hypotenuse, we call this the sine of theta. And the reason I say the sine of theta is because again, remember we're, we're, we're looking at it from the view of theta. So from theta's perspective, this is the opposite length of the triangle, but then it's over the hypotenuse of the triangle. And again, with this triangle, we're looking at the opposite length over the hypotenuse of the triangle. So we can call that sine. When we're looking at adjacent over hypotenuse, again, let me go ahead and write that out, adjacent over hypotenuse, we call that cosine of theta. And this SIN and COS, those are abbreviations. Sine is spelled S-I-N-E and cosine is C-O-S-I-N-E, sine and cosine. We'll talk more about their relationship to one another in another video. Um, but uh, the cosine, uh, again, of angle theta is now we're looking at the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And for this smaller triangle, adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that ratio is going to be the same in both of these triangles because that angle theta has the same measurement. And then when we're talking about opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent, we call this relationship or this ratio tangent, tangent of theta. Okay. Again, tan, we just use the abbreviation. This is the full, the full word written out. And these are basically just ways, like I said, to help us determine lengths of the sides of triangles, the unknown lengths of sides of triangles, when we know at least one side of the triangle and one measurement of one of the other angles in a right triangle. And again, these are for right triangles. Let's take a look at an example so that we can actually practice this and how to use sine, cosine, and tangent. So I've left our trigonometric ratios up here at the top. So sine of a specific measurement of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of a specific measurement of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. And so I've left theta in there in these positions. But if we look at our triangle, we actually have one of the angles labeled here with an actual measurement of 38 degrees. So we're gonna use this 38 degrees. And then we're also told that this length right here is 17 units, but we don't know this length or this length. And what we really want to find out is the length of X. So normally, if we did have this length down here, we could use Pythagorean theorem and find out the length of x by a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But since we don't have this other length, we have to use our trigonometric ratios. So let's see how we do this. So from this angle's perspective, from 38, let's see where our two pieces of information lie. Well, I see that I have 
uh, this number over here, the length of this length of the triangle is 17, and that is opposite from my angle of 38 degrees. So that I'm going to label with pink, because we've been doing pink for opposite, okay? Go ahead and write that in there as well. And then for this length, length of x, we, can, we know that that is the hypotenuse because that one is opposite of the 90 degree angle. So we're going to label that one with hypotenuse. And so now we need to look at our trigonometric ratios. Oops, sorry, my video is in the way here. We need to look at our trigonometric ratios and which one of these deals with opposite and hypotenuse. Well, that's going to be sine. So we're going to say the sine of 38 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. And now we can actually plug in some numbers here. The sine of 38 degrees equals opposite, which is 17, over hypotenuse, which is x. This is where your calculator will come in, and you'll learn more about exactly how you find the sine, cosine, and tangent. You'll find more about how to figure out these exact numbers when you get into trigonometry. But for right now, for, for geometry, we're going to use our calculator. So let me show you what that looks like. So here's my calculator, move it over here. And so here are my trigonom trigonometry functions right here. But what I have to do first in, in this particular calculator, your calculator might look a little bit different or have its functions might be a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and put in that 38, and then I'm going to get hit my sine function. And it gives me this big, long decimal. So I'm going to round this to the nearest tenths place. So that gives me a 0 0.6. So sine of 38 is 0 0.6, and that equals 17 over x. So now we're going to start to use our algebra to solve for x. So since 17 is being divided by x, I need to multiply times x on both sides. So I'm going to multiply by x over here and x over here. That's going to cancel out over here on this side, so I'm left with 0.6x equals 17. And now to solve for x, I'm going to divide by that 0 0.6. So divide by 0 0.6, divide on both sides to keep the equation equal. And then x equals, we'll go ahead and do this, 17 divided by 0 0.6 equals this long number. Now I could have also make it a little bit more exact. I know that this 0 0.6 came from my sine of 38 degrees, right? So I can do 17 divided by 38 sine. And so that gives me, that's our, our sine number. So you can see how it's put in here, 17 divided by the sine of 38. So then when I hit equals, it gives me 27.6. I'm going to round it to the nearest tenth, 27. So x equals 27.6 units. Now let's look at another example. So again, here we have a right triangle. We are told that this angle's measurement is 40 degrees. We know that the length of the hypotenuse is 6. And then we want to find this length x over here. So let's see what we have in terms of or in regards to our angle of 40 degrees. So we know again that this, this longest side of the triangle is the hypotenuse. So I'll highlight that in yellow and label it. And then if we look at this side, this is the other side that creates that 40 degree angle. So this is going to be our adjacent side. Again, it's all in relation to the angle that we're looking at. So since that angle is what we're looking at, that 40 degree angle, then the, we, we would call this side the adjacent side. So again, let's look at our trigonometric ratios and figure out which one deals with adjacent and hypotenuse. I can see that cosine does. So let's write our, out our equation. So we're going to look at the cosine of 40 degrees 
equals adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse. And let's go ahead and plug those numbers in. Cosine of 40 degrees, adjacent is x, and then the hypotenuse is 6. Okay, so that's what we have to work with here. So let's go ahead and try to do a little bit of solving for this first, and then we will use our calculator to find out what the cosine of 40 actually is. So first we need to multiply both sides of the equation by six. So that leaves us with six times the cosine of 40 degrees equals x. So now we can go ahead and just plug these in into our calculator. So let me pull that up. Move this over here. So we've got 6 times, and I'm going to put this in parentheses, 40 cosine. So that's the cosine of 40 is 0.766. And then we're going to hit equals, and that's what it is times 6. So we've got 4.6 if we round to the nearest tenth. 4.6 is equal to x. 4.6 units. Something really helpful that I'm sure you'll hear a lot um, as you go into geometry, a mnemonic device to help you remember all of the orders of these, and that is so toa that you will hear that over and over again as you progress through learning trigonometric ratios. So katoa, so meaning the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is what C stands for, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So it's just a little mnemonic device to help you remember the order of all of those and what goes in the numerator and what goes in the denominator of each of those fraction ratios. I hope this video was helpful for you and helped you learn a little bit about trigonometric ratios, at least the introduction to them. Please like and subscribe, and I would love to hear your comments down in the comments below, and stay tuned for the next geometry video. Thanks so much.